So uh, my feeling is that uh, something is, is and ought to be done. And uh, in addition to all the testimony we've heard tonight, we, we have some concrete evidence that there, something is not quite right there and, or could be improved. Um, when we talked about the Mitchell Road issue, I went around uh, to many, uh, not every door, but a lot of doors on the Mitchell Road area. And one of the things that people said was, uh, you know, well, we're not sure about the speed limit, whether it should be 25 or 30, but what we really want are sidewalks. And our kids live on this street, and the only way they can get to the other street is to go down on Mitchell Road. And so when somebody said that to me, I said, well, gee, uh, I'm, I may be on this PACS committee, and uh, that's something I would look into. Well, when I got on the PACS committee, um, the, uh, the engineers and so forth that uh, uh, were looking at it uh, um, were looking at Shore Road and Two Lights Road. And so I said, uh, gee, uh, it, it's a shame that we're not looking at Mitchell Road also or instead of or something, but um, uh, my, my feeling is let's solve the problem that we, we can solve and maybe someday down the road we'll do something about Mitchell Road. Um, now, a couple of comments, uh, other arguments or concerns are aesthetics. Um, I think I heard twice tonight, and I think it was a great comment. It's not much of a rural community if you have to get into a 1995 automobile to go down the road. I mean, when I think rural community, I think you ought to be able to walk down a, a rural road. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bleak vision of the future. Um, I also have... Uh, warm, very warm, fuzzy feelings about Shore Road. When I grew up in just over the line in South Portland, we came Shore Road every time we came out uh, to my grandmother's house. And uh, if this were contemplating a, a huge swath, I would be against it. Uh, I, I agree. If it, if it were a, uh, you know, another lane, if it was a lane for an automobiles, I would not be in favor of it. Uh, but I think uh, four feet on either side, which we may, I don't know, we can shift where the middle of the road is a little bit. I think that's a reasonable compromise. Um, uh, the stone walls are lovely. Uh, I had a conversation with some people from Delano Park recently, and I said, uh, you know, I believe most of those stone walls can stay where they are. Uh, at best, some of them may move a couple of feet, but, and I, and I really, I, I don't mean that I t take the, their uh, uh, love for the stone walls and, and the picturesque quality lightly at all, but uh, I pointed out, I said, you know, these stone walls were not built by the pilgrims. I mean, these are, by and large, next to developments. And so uh, I don't think that we will critically uh, damage the quality if we move them slightly. And if we have a, uh, a town committee with, with ver various people that are interested, uh, I think uh, something can be worked out, uh, a compromise. Um, I think the American uh, love affair with the automobile is far from over. Um, the traffic is coming. Uh, it's here, as uh, people have pointed out. Uh, people are driving twice as much as they were uh, a generation ago. Uh, as soon as someone gets to be 15 or 16, they want a license. The next thing they want is a car. Um, fiscally speaking, I think that when we have a 4 to 1 contribution of, of money that we're paying out to begin with, uh, I think there is a, an argument that it is sensible and fiscally responsible to to uh, strike uh, or, you know, while the iron is hot or, or make hay while the sun shines. The money is there now. Um, and I, I know that many of, many of us have been lamenting the fact that, you know, gee, we wish the school funding formula treated Cape Elizabeth a little better. Um, and I, I frankly can't imagine that our, our, our state representatives uh, if, if, the, if the state of Maine or the federal government wanted to help us with a four to one contribution, for example, on a school project, I can't imagine that they would turn it down. Um, uh, finally, uh, it seems uh, I, I'm just so pleased with the way committees and, and, and volunteers have worked in this community, and I am optimistic. I hope this passes, and it looks like, uh, you know, being on the appointments committee, Sometimes we have to beat the bushes a little bit for volunteers, and it looks like this committee would uh, be filled very quickly, and I hope it passes. Thank you. Anybody? Oh, excuse me. Council McLaughlin. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, too, want to commend the people who have spoken with us this evening, who have written letters to us, who have signed and circulated petitions, who have made the phone calls. The line I've got to use tonight is people asked if I had many phone calls. And I said over the weekend I had more calls and messages than my teenage daughter. So <laughs> I knew there were going to be a lot of you out here tonight. Um, I think the timing is right. This has brought the issue to a head. I'm very supportive of the motion Council Linnell made. That's why I seconded it. I did promise people I've talked with over the weekend, especially that I was coming tonight with my ears open and my mind open. That's why Council Linnell was pausing a bit at the end of his motion with those last two parts of it, because I did listen to people last night. That's why I had him add no taking of private property. I also had him add that there would be proper drainage patterns and snow storage areas. We have to include those things in the study. Councillor Chapel, you've confused me a bit. I heard you say... That's not hard. I know. Um, you were supporting the... Des you would support the design study. And I think the design study could answer one of your questions. How much would it cost? You do the design study. Part of it can be a cost analysis, and that would give you a better handle, give us all a better handle on what the real cost would be. The second statement you made was about if we put money into this, we can't do something else. That's part of our job as counselors, is to make the decisions on what to fund and what not to fund. I need to know how much it's going to cost before I decide whether or not I'm going to do the full funding. I need to know how many stone walls it's really going to impact. I don't have all the information yet to make an informed decision. I very firmly believe I'll have a lot better information and be able to make a good decision one way or the other after we have a design study. We don't know yet exactly what the impact will be on the character of both roads. I have, you know, I run, walk, I'll, I'll confess, I walk, I run uphill, run, <laughs> run downhill, walk uphill on Shore Road. I know the road pretty well. I've started claiming the white line when I'm doing that. There are some drivers who are not real pleased with me because I do that. Um, so be it. I don't feel safe. I know what it's like. I have driven down Two Lights Road twice over the weekend to get a better feel for that. Counselors have done their homework. You've heard us all. I've talked to Doug Harris, the um, Falmouth town manager today, because people had been talking about Route 88. We had a good talk about that. Talked to people who don't live in Cape Elizabeth, who know bike routes and pedestrian shoulders elsewhere, the whole gamut. I still don't have the information, however, of what the real impacts are going to be on Shore Road and Two Lights Road. That's why I thought the wording on this petition was very good. That's why I think that the wording of the motion is very good. I'm going to support the motion because I want to be able to make an informed decision. Council Marvin? This is not an easy decision. Um, I, I want to thank people for taking time to call me. I think about 50 or 60 people have called me in the past week, which was a record in our household for taking messages and that kind of thing. Um, last fall I campaigned for state representative and that's a little bit like having your own public hearing. People tell you all day long how they feel about different issues. And the thing that people said the most to me was stop spending our money. We just can't afford to spend any more money. Now I'd love to have a bike path. Um, I think it would be great for my kids. We'd have a really good time on it. And safety is something that I'm very concerned about. Um, but I do think that there's a little merit to this idea that if there's more roadway, it creates faster cars and more kids, and that's not a good combination. Um, Shore Road isn't safe. When I grew up here 20 years ago, I was not allowed to ride my bike on Shore Road. When I graduated from high school, I still was not allowed to. I used to go to USM to school every day in a car, but I wasn't allowed to ride my bike on Shore Road. Um, there, I always never could understand that. Now as a parent, I can finally understand what was going on there. I think we got some um, questions of fairness. Today I've had people from Broad Cove contact me and people from Fowler Road contact me and say, well, what about us? How come we can't have a bike path on our street? And, you know, those are good questions. Um, how, you know, how do you decide wh what road is more important than another? But it all comes down to, I think, that sometimes the role of a, a counselor is to be mean. And I think that that's what has to happen tonight. As at um, some point, you need to draw a line. Shh, and please, please. You know, you talk about money and it's a little for this and a little for that and it doesn't seem like it's very much. 
Well, it can. It adds up, and that's when you get into trouble is when you start every project is just a little bit and it's, it's going to be okay. I think we need to ask what the role of federal, state, and local government is, and I don't think it's to provide bike paths to us. I think that federal money is our money. It's our tax money. It's the money that you and I spend. And, you know, the paper said we'd be the first town to ever not take this kind of grant. I guess I wouldn't mind having that pasted on us because th that's something I'd be proud of. Um, I'd even be willing to author a letter to our Washington delegation to tell them that the federal government should not be spending our money this way. This has got to stop. Um, you know, my children are nine, five, and nine days old. I grew up here, they're going to grow up here, and, you know, I'd like for them to have bike paths, but I don't think that's something that the taxpayers should be paying for. Um, there's a lot of good things about this project, but unfortunately right now, we can't afford it. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Cargishaw. Yes, I want to thank all of you who came tonight, um, who spoke, who called, who wrote letters. Um, this has to be the most responsive item that I've ever dealt with on the council, it even surpassed the deer hunt. If any of you can remember receiving <laughs> communications from Alaska and all over the country. So I do appreciate your input. And I've thought very long and very hard about this bike path. When I first ran for the council in 1987, I was a strong supporter of a bike path along Shore Road because I had seen several creative, often off-road paths in other communities and states. It was the majority opinion of the council at that time, as um, former councillor Masterson related, that a study should be undertaken to determine exactly what would be involved and approximately how much the project would cost. The report that we received from T.Y. Lynn International dated February 89, which I did not hear referred to at all in any of these discussions, was a great shock to me. In order to meet most construction standards, Shore Road would more closely resemble our Route 77 than the country road with old trees, ledges, and curves that it currently has today. And I do want to quote to you um, from this report, and we were talking about safety and how much safer it would be if we had that extra bike lane. And one of the comments from the engineers was that on the um, pronounced horizontal highway curves that are quite predominant on this road, that ten uh, tendency is for vehicles to flatten their turning radius and then encroach onto bikeway areas. And therefore, their recommendation in certain areas would be that the bikeway would be from six to seven feet wide. Also, since the actual right-of-way of the highway itself is not known, that we would have to undertake um, a study to determine where the correct right-of-way was. We have wetland modification permits that would be needed from the um, Army Corps of Engineers and the DEP. That involves a long process as well as an ex uh, expensive process. Um, if they went on to give us cost estimates. They estimated that if we had five foot wide bike paths with three inches of paving, it would cost approximately $646,800. And in order to even do the right-of-way survey, it would be between six and $8,000. So the estimate that was proposed with the grant is nowhere near what probably the actual cost would be. So therefore, since um, Mr. McGovern said that we most likely would have to um, follow the standards set by the federal government, I find it very difficult after seeing this study and the slide presentation to consider constructing a bike path in that manner. Aside from the very high uh, unsupplemented costs that this um, report showed us, the destruction of one of our most scenic treasures caused the council to decide not to move forward. So I was very surprised to have this proposal not only resurrected, but funded in part by the federal government this fall. I was sort of under the impression that this was, so to speak, a dead issue. Our past mistakes, which seemed simple projects um, at first light, was the wholesale destruction of the natural character at Fickett Street and Sawyer Road. A small widening project was the way it was originally described. 
And before my resident he residency here in 1968, apparently our current 77 in Bowery Beach Road had that same country feel. I cannot support this project for the following reasons. It will be far more expensive than presented, the permitting, perhaps even constructing of some sort of a bridge in the Pond Cove area. The town has many higher priorities for expenditures of its funds. The ruining of one of the town's most historic scenic areas, the original Colonial Kings Highway, has been, um, would be an absolute crime. The comprehensive plan of 1993 and the scenic vista survey of 1989, which wasn't uh, mentioned earlier, describes Shore Road as, by public opinion survey, as the most enjoyed scenic natural area in town. The curvilinear alignment of the road, undeveloped character, and frequent grade changes enhance the visual quality, as do the views of the ocean and period architecture of old estates. <clears throat> the natural beauty of Cape Elizabeth is the reason why many of us have moved here. Fourth, the widening of the road would encourage faster travel and not necessarily lessen the safety factor as much as we'd all like to believe. I spoke with our chief of police this morning. Um, he said that when roads are widened, cars do have a tendency to just go a little bit faster. And as the engineers have stated, they have a tendency to drift into bike lanes on corners. Some consideration also needs to be given to those properties that would be negatively impacted. Although at first glance, it appears the road could accommodate a four or five foot wide path on each side, engineering and gov government requirements would most likely widen beyond that dimension. I would truly like to see accommodation, especially for pedestrians, on this, on this stretch of road, but not to the degree that this proposal dictates. The town did some restructuring of so or shoulder improvements in the past couple of years of that area, and it did enhance it to a degree. Such is the way we should go and still have funds for other roadway maintenance. I, th I also feel it's very important that we do connect the two ends of town. It's very appealing, and I'd be very interested in a design which would provide perhaps a sidewalk or some sort of relining, as was suggested this evening. Thank you. I uh, don't have no big spiel. I think the most of it has all been said pretty much, but I am uh, <coughs> in favor of going ahead with the design of the project and see what's there. I was involved when they uh, widened Fickett Street, and I would like to know what's going to happen here. I was stood at the corner of Soy and Fickett and asked what trees were going to stay and what was going to be left, I mean, stay and what was going to go, and I got a very different outlook when they get completed because I think I've called it Iwo Jima ever since because I think they devastated that part of Pickett Street. And I would like to see the design on this to see just what's going to happen if they're going to cut way back or there may be some bushes that they don't have to trim. I think if the committee is uh, creative and want to work that they can work around some of these things that uh, are uh, great for Cape Elizabeth and the, and the highway that uh, is uh, covered as far as Shore Road goes. But uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I've heard many times this evening that uh, about it's going to speed up, but I think that is a problem for the police department. That's what we have, and I should think they could handle the speed problem as far as Shore Road goes. So uh, <clears throat> I want to thank you all for coming. That's the biggest crowd that I've seen here for a good number of years. And uh, when we had a school hearing, I think they all sat in uh, one side. And that was a fairly large project. So I am going to vote <coughs> to move ahead as far as the design of this project and get another look at it and see what's going to happen. And, <clears throat> and decide at that point and see what the cost is. Anybody else got any comments? You ready for the motion? Mr. I'll understand the motion. Yes, sorry. Just a couple of points. Uh, 
I mean, I think we should remember when we talk again about this, the rural character, uh, uh, when we talk about the King's Highway, I mean, people walked down the King's Highway. And I think we are at a, a point where we're deciding where are we going with the automobile here. Um, and uh, I, I, when we've talked about speed limits in the past, I mean, I don't recall you know, anyone suggesting that we should narrow Mitchell Road because people drive faster on wide roads. I mean, I, I, I think that uh, uh, that's, you know, that's speculative. And I think that, uh, I, I think we could move forward with the design. Um, uh, certainly there are uh, some uh, very thoughtful and conscientious people that uh, have a stake in this and have uh, suggested they'd serve on the, on the design committee. And uh, I think there are some issues, uh, for example, uh, if there's, uh, if there are some concerns about exactly where the middle of the road is, maybe that's something that can be discussed so that you, we d if someone has a, a, just a terribly small front yard uh, and we have right away on the other side and there are some woods there, uh, that, that might work out and I think that's the time for compromise. Uh, the traffic is coming and I think we have a, you know, decision to make, how, excuse me, how we want that to go and, uh, I think we could move forward with the, the design, and uh, if uh, things always come up, and uh, I'm, I'm just confident that people in this community can uh, compromise on them. Thank you. Yes, Council Cogginshall. If this motion passes, Mr. McGovern, when would we expect to see a plan? The appointments committee of the council, whatever process you would want to set up, would have to form the committee. Uh, no, under this motion, no work would begin until October of 1995. You would see a plan uh, sometime in 1996, probably six months or so from my, uh, mid 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 96 to late 96. You'd late summer, probably of 96. Anybody else ready for the motion? No. 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 I think we've had enough. It's five minutes at 12. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Now I think it's really from the members of the council and not from the public when you're ready to vote and after you held your public hearings. And I've seen some state reps and previously and councillors nod their head so I must be on the right track. <laughs> Thank you. Give me glasses too. Ready for the motion? Ready. All those in favor raise your hand. Those in favor of the motion. Those opposed? Four to three. Three to four. 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 Excuse me. Table Ready? Yeah. Go ahead. Give Good discussion. Did you? Did you yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I got another motion for you. <laughs> Shoot. That uh, the council authorize the powers to be, you phrase this the way you want to, but I know what I want it to say. That the design part of this can go forward and that we will have it still the 80 20. Is that right, Mr. McGovern? They'll pay 80 and we'll pay 20. I want to hear the rest of what you're going to say before. <laughs> and uh, the context that you're asking the question. But that we are not voting to authorize complete construction until we see the design. That is correct. That's the way I'd like to have it read. Well, that's what it said. That's what we just wrote. read. Who, who's, who changed it? Who said read, it? read number 88. No, no, no. Linnell made the motion. Councilor Linnell and Council McLaughlin seconded it. And wasn't that the one you were voting on? Yes. yes. Well, that one said construction. No. no Design. Design. Okay. You sure? Yes. It says right here, number 88. Item yes. 88. You have your agenda present? The only side you can ask for reconsideration is right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, I'd like to reconsider that vote then. Can we do that? Now, see Who's going to second your reconsideration? Second. I, I can second, can I, if I wasn't All those in favor of letting Nerve reconsider, raise a hand. Wait a minute. 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 
<laughs> it has to be someone who voted on the prevailing side. Not the person. Second. How do you do it? The person who makes the motion has to be on the prevailing side. He was on the prevailing side. Yeah. Not the second. He can make the motion. Prevailing. What the? Uh, he can make them. Yeah, he can make. He was on the prevailing side. He can ask for. I can second. Yeah, he can make. He can, he, can, he can make the motion. I can second. That's right. Do we have any rules of what it takes? Many organizations, <coughs> well, if they're going to reconsider, take more than have a the majority. Yeah. It takes a, That's Debbie right. may have, it takes a majority to reconsider. Right. Simple majority. Yep. You'll have them right, President? You know, this is very confusing, Mr. Chairman, because I made the statement that I would like to see this design part done, but not the construction. You didn't correct me at that time. I'm sorry. I thought you had the motion in front of you and no. was reading from it, that's all. Uh, well, where are we now? Where are we now? We got the clerk looking up. Uh, We're at reconsideration. reconsideration. May I make a comment on that? Because the motion, as presented, that's right, is not what Irving has talked about. It starts off to authorize the town manager to notify the, the main department of transportation of the town's desire to move forward with design of a bikeway, etc. Then it lists a number of things, and it simply the only reference to construction, I think, is that no design work may occur until October 1995, and no construction until the 1997 construction season. It, in effect, is a motion to move ahead, starting with the design and ending up with the construction. If this is that is what the motion is. No. You're Council absolutely Mc right. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe if Councilor Chapel wants to reconsider this, we should do that. The original motion can be amended to delete the offensive words and no construction until the 99 construction season. If that's going to be the hang-up, I'll make that amendment. I want it to go to design. We need to be informed. The way I understood the motion, it was design only, but I don't quite follow with what you said. The saying. motion starts with design, but it, it ended up not limited. It ended up with construction, Mr. Chairman. We can yeah. take it, it out. say nothing about construction. It also says <coughs> in number six, of, I'll right there, find it. Right there. Um, a final design shall be approved by the Cape Elizabeth. We have we have a motion on the floor. We should be voting in that before we have this continued discussion. Well, I'm discussing the motion. So the motion is to reconsider item 88. Yes. All those in favor. Second. I second. How many? One, two, three, four. Okay. Those opposed. Those opposed, I'm sorry. Three. Two, three, four to three, in reverse. Motion to delete the language. Did we get the vote to reconsider? Yes. Oh, I Thank guess you. I would do it. Then. Now, do we have another motion? Mr. Go, go Mr. Ahead. Chairman, uh, I'd like to amend uh, my original uh, motion uh, on number eight to delete. Can, can I ask for a point sure. of order? Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. To the clerk, if it's an amended motion, do we vote on the amendment and then the first motion, or are we kind of better off just making a new motion? I think you're better off making a new motion because you're reconsidering. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's make a new motion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, uh, make a motion uh, just as we have in before us, except a number eight of the item 88 to delete the words and no construction until the 1997 construction season. And what else you got to add to your motion? That, no, that's it. Okay. That'll do it. Thank you. That'll do it. Huh? Does that include numbers nine and ten? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. Will you read that again, yeah. Councilor Nell? Sure. Uh, I, uh, my motion is as before, except um, in in number eight, I would delete. Uh, and no construction until the 1997 construction season. I don't think it's possible. So number eight would read, just no design work may occur until October 1995, period. Period. Yeah. That's right. 
Councilor Dalbot. Did you well, have your hand up? No. Well, at, at some point, if this is the logical uh, point, I am not sure, based on my reading of the Department of Transportation uh, letter to Mr. McGovern, uh, that this vote is possible. It is certainly not what I read the Department of Transportation is uh, looking for. And uh, we've talked about voting on some things we weren't very sure about before. I'm not so uh, uh, sure this shouldn't be tabled to uh, uh, the next meeting and that we get more input from the Department of Transportation of what we're even talking about is feasible. And if somebody would like, you know, I think I can read a little of this, but maybe others have seen it. If I might, Mr. Chairman, my, my intent was whatever the council did this evening, I will notify MDOT of that. If you had passed the earlier motion, I would have notified them of that. If you had passed a motion to kill this thing, I would have notified them of that. If you pass a motion that says design and you make it clear that's all you're authorizing, I would notify them of that. Whatever action this council takes, they will be notified of and get their reaction to it. What is your basic concern? Um, the letter yeah. that was received from uh, the Department of uh, Transportation asks for uh, authorization to proceed on the project and states some of the requirements which must be completed prior to beginning the project, which I assume means beginning the design phase. One, development of an agreement between MDOT and the applicant detailing project development responsibilities and financial relationships. Two, execution of financial documents between MDOT and the Federal Highway Administration to allow federal participation and reimbursement of project costs. Three, verification of source and availability of non-federal uh, matching funds. In other words, funds from us. I had a similar concern today. I asked the manager about it. I said, are we being stupid making this kind of motion? Is this just going to kill it with MDOT? You know, do they let you go through design and then make your final decision after design? And if I misquote you, you, you said you'd kick me, I recall. I think I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> that the town gets to say whether or not it's going to execute the final document after design. Yeah, there's, at the time you get to, right. to before construction, you're asked to uh, execute something, something called the local state agreement. That is, I think, the, the first item out of the three that you mentioned. Uh, is that's, that's the overall framework document. Within that document are the particulars of the project. And any, any project comes forward when we did the traffic light at Spurwink or whatever, any project at the state, you do have that local state agreement. And, you know, the, the terms of that are still to be developed. Uh, that would be something that would be negotiated with MDOT at this point. I'm, I'm just very uncomfortable based on, on what I see here that we would even get any federal money for the design phase. No. As, as I understand this motion is that's all you're authorizing. I would notify MDOT of that and we would see what their response is and what those terms are, what those agreements are. That would come back to the council and then you would take action on whether or not that was agreeable or, or not agreeable. You know, the, the difficulty with this whole project in the very beginning is, is that, uh, one, we don't have a design yet, mm. so people don't know what they're voting on to a certain extent, and two, the state, because as uh, someone pointed out, uh, was this iced tea, this Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act has only been around for a couple of years, and the state is plowing new ground all the time, literally and figuratively, on, uh, on how this works. And, you know, they're still evolving the rules on, on how they're implementing ICT in the state of Maine, particularly in, the, in the, the context as well of the sensible transportation policy that was enacted by the voters uh, two years ago, I think. Yes, Councilor Nell. Well, I'd just like to say that I, I, I believe the town does owe a great debt of gratitude to Councilor Dahlbeck for his very careful fiscal uh, and, and uh, monetary commitment uh, frame of mind. And, I, and I, I, really, I really feel that. And 
uh, and I'd like to, uh, but, and I, I'd like to point out, I, I think we are very well protected by this draft because it does say that the design is, has to be completed by a, uh, a firm hired by the town. In number six, it says the final design will be approved by the town, must be approved by the town council. So we do have uh, uh, another, uh, we do have sort of veto power, if you will. And ultimately, the, with that 80-20 um, in investment uh, relationship, the, 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 uh, the government uh, is investing at 80%. Uh, I, I don't see them backing out uh, for frivolous reasons. Yeah. You know, one point in response to Mr. Dalbeck. The government, state may very well say, mm -hmm. if this is the way that Cape Elizabeth wants to structure this thing, you're going to pay 100% of that design. <coughs> they could very well say that. Yeah. And if, you know, if that was the case, you know, nothing in here <coughs> that I can see really authorizes the expenditure of a nickel. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've got to come back to the council to get authorization to, to spend a nickel and you know, even to come back, and if, if their response is that you've got to come up with that 20 percent or you're obligated to that, I've got to come back to the council before we do anything between now and October. But they, they might very well say, because of the way this thing's structured, the town's not committed enough, and uh, if you want to do this study, we're not, we're not contributing. Okay. So where are we at? Councilor now, you, would you like to... Uh Move your motion again? Y yes. Uh, you want to read it all up? Uh, uh, don't we have a motion on the floor? Yeah, I it's, we we on, it's on the yeah. floor. Okay. What's, on the floor? On the floor. We got a What's on the floor? What, what do we? Debbie, where are we? <laughs> where I understand where you are is draft motion item number 88, deleting in number 8 the words and no construction until the 1997 construction seating season you added number nine you no know, taking of private properties you added number 10 proper drainage and storage and snow storage okay. yes counselor just a point of discussion mr chairman we want we aren't going to know the funding unless we ask it's one of those situations you don't get an answer unless you ask the question i think we need to ask the question by approving the motion I don't think we have a motion on the floor. All we did was back off uh, those words from the previous motion and to reconsider the present one. I, did we, and I got lost in if we had a vote on that. Okay. It was a motion that was moved and seconded to reconsider the item. That was done yeah. properly since the right. chapel was on the prevailing side. Yeah. That passed four three. Four, three. Councilor Linnell brought up he made a, motion. a motion, a main motion, as I just described, amending that number eight, which deleted and no construction until the 1997 construction season. And he added number 10, you know, taking a private properties. Uh, number nine, and add number ten, proper drainage and snow storage. And he did nod yes. Right. That's correct. That's my motion. You second. That's your motion. That's my motion. And who I was second? second. Councilor so. McLaughlin was the second. Okay. Everyone else understand the motion? Hmm? Yes? No, read it again, will you? <laughs> There's no word construction in it. I'm happy. There's no word. There's no word. <coughs> There's no word construction in it. You want it read? Just kidding you, Bill. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hand. Those opposed? Four to three. It moves forward. Now you can go home. <laughs> we have another item. Item 89, to consider authorizing the design of a bikeway Shoulders alongside the Two Lights Road and Route 77 to Two Lights State Park and take any necessary action. Anybody care to make a motion? <laughs> I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to authorize the town manager to notify the Maine Department of Transportation of the town's desire to move forward with a design of a bikeway pedestrian shoulder on Two Lights Road from Route 77 to Two Lights State Park 
subject to the following guidelines. Number one, the shoulders may not exceed five feet in width on either side. Number two, I'm still going to call it the shoulders, maybe narrower at locations to avoid wetland filling. Number three, stone wall shall be relocated as a project, ex project expense if it's in the way of the project. Number four, design is to be completed by a firm hired by the town of Cape Elizabeth. Number five, a local design review committee consisting of seven citizens of the town with the town manager and the director of public works serving as ex officio members shall be appointed by the town council to work with the consultant. Number six, a final design shall be approved by the, by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Number seven, no design work may occur until October 1995, period. Number eight, there will be no taking of private property. Number nine, proper drainage patterns and snow storage areas shall be maintained. Second. You heard the motion. Anybody got any comment? I just want to add one comment onto my previous comments. I am a bike rider. Two Lights is part of the typical route I go from the State Park to 77. I have never once felt in danger on Two Lights Road on my bike. Council Cogshell. Yes, I too spoke with the town of Falmouth this morning. Um, because the Falmouth Bikeway was presented as how a bikeway could be done on one side of the road. This was constructed around 1989 and I spoke to the Falmouth planner as well as the director of public works. He said um, they widened only on one side of the road and they followed the old trolley line therefore they had no real filling, no cutting, no blasting to do at all. Um, but they have, the town has since realized that um, half of the people are going the wrong way. And the path is now eight feet wide on one side. That technically it should have had a physical barrier to separate the um, lane from the travel area. And they did have some uh, expense with drainage. Mm -hmm. It was between a mile and a mile and a half long. They are in the process of petitioning the state to be able to build a pathway on the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. The cost of this mile to mile and a half, where it was all basically flat and just waiting to be paved with minor drainage, um, cost approximately $300,000. And that's why I feel strongly that the, the proposal on Shore Road where we would need more filling, we need um, wetlands to deal with wetlands, perhaps even some blasting, is a totally unrealistic price and it's not even worth um, spending the money to have the study. That most of it is a fairly clean shot, wide um, area. The problem perhaps should be that speeds should be monitored a little more carefully or uh, perhaps even more shoulder work should be done on the road. But I can't support a bikeway on this road either. Thank you. Councilman Cog, excuse me, McLaughlin. Getting late. It sure is. I'm going to support this. I have a, a friend who's lost a child in a bike accident on this road. If for no other reason, we need to look at it. Councilman Mel. Um. I'm supporting this, uh, I think, for most of the same reasons as I, uh, I think we should go forward with the design for the shore road, uh, bike and pedestrian path. Um, certainly the two lights, uh, I feel anyway, uh, the two lights uh, project is, is a relative bargain. Um, I feel we have to start somewhere, we've got to start somewhere with the design. Um, and I think, uh, I'm very concerned about wetlands also. And, uh, but I think when you consider all the businesses out on that, at the end of two lights, when you consider the impact on the wetlands, although it's a little, it's certainly harder to determine, the, the impact on the wetlands from, in, from increased automobile traffic, which is only going to increase, it's, it's uh, increased dramatically in the, la in, the, in the last generation, that that uh, offsets uh, concerns about uh, uh, expanding the road a few feet to one side or the other with the wetlands. Uh, there's a, uh, uh, my goodness, there was an article uh, in the newspaper uh, recently, a couple of part series talking about mercury poisoning uh, or contamination in New England and, uh, and one of the sources for that mercury 
uh, is uh, auto exhaust. Thank you. Anybody else? All ready for the motion. Yes. I just, I just want to add one other comment that the section of road that is going to be studied for the bike path is the most open road. It does have some of the businesses on it. But the road, part of the road that's the most dangerous is one we're not even considering. It's the second half of the part from the park down to the lobster shack area. That is not being considered as part of this. I, I th it's, not going, it's not going all the way down. Yes. Well, certainly, I uh, thank uh, Councillor Cogasol for that point. I, I think that um, certainly there will be more traffic, and, and I, would, I would rather have nine, you know, if I, nine tenths of the loaf, so to speak. If, if, if we can't do the whole loaf, I, I'd settle for nine tenths. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, are we talking about two lights to the State Park entrance or all the way to the Lobster Shack? The State Park. To the State Park entrance. That is correct. Not the other. No. Okay. All set? All those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Four to three. I, I would prefer to take a... Yeah, do you want to say something? I prefer to go home. Say that again? No. No. Not tonight. Bring it up. Bring it up. We'll take it at the next meeting. Bring it up. We'll take it at the next meeting. I'd like to have a five minute break. <sighs> you. My pillow. Five minutes. Why did, if Judy, rather. You're chicken out, Irving. Why don't you get it? Who was fairly quick and I'll circulate it. If it's something that they do not want to consider it off, there's no sense of putting on the agenda and getting a thousand people there again. That's like all in one vote. Why not like the street? Do the sign and then vote yeah. the I got my own Thank you, Deb. <laughs> I don't want bubbles. We don't have these poor guys. <laughs> it's the problem. I know. They can go raise the money. We got out. They have the money for you. Herb. What happened to our? I don't really give a damn. <laughs> this thing. What happened to our other councilman? Oh, there he comes. <laughs> We're eating with it. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Thank you, Gabble. Thank you. Call the meeting. You're going to take my arm off. <laughs> Can I give you the chain? I told him that. Councilor Chapel, you with us or against us? What a deal. <laughs> it's the birthday boy. Yeah, it's our birthday. Why did I click go? Oh. Someone wanted some water, Janet. It's Friday. Oh, should be right we here. Can start on the ball. Hey, Roy. Huh? Yeah. Saturday. 
You're going to let me do an intro to that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just make it short. It's going to be very easy for me. To co we'll call the meeting back to order and we'll take up item 90 to consider authorizing the Cape Elizabeth Little League to continue planning a ball field at Fort Williams Park and Lions Field and to solicit funds from the general public with the proceeds to be deposited into the town ball field improvement fund and take any necessary action. I believe the manager has got a couple opening remarks. Yes, I, I do, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Cape Elizabeth Little League has for a long time been looking at the, the different needs for fields. Uh, as, as well, the Fort Williams Committee looked at their master plan several years ago. We had a uh, fields advisory committee a few years ago that did, looked at different fields. And the Little League is before you this evening uh, with a really a two-phase plan. Uh, one is to look at uh, Fort Williams, and the second is to look at Lions Field. Uh, the Fort Williams, uh, there's two specific issues. Uh, one is should they really begin planning and, and go to the expense and the time of doing a site plan? Is it, is it worthwhile? Is it something you'd be willing to look at? And two, if they're going to do the fundraising, uh, the <coughs> town has its federal ID number and uh, its town accounts, which enables uh, people to give very comfortably knowing that their contributions will be uh, safe from uh, the clutches of the IRS in terms of uh, charitable contributions that the town is a legal entity in order to uh, contribute to. Uh, Little League's worked very hard on this. Uh, at this point, we still don't have a site plan. And as mentioned in the, the uh, uh, summary of recommendations or one of the documents, yeah. uh, that uh, we would expect to see that at some point. But it's important for Little League planning that they uh, at least get started more on their planning and know whether or not the town wishes to be a partner as, as this proceeds. And there are at least five representatives here at this uh, hour uh, representing Little League. Thank as you. As well as Maureen O'Meara in the back, our town planner who helped to prepare an application which affects item number 91. Yes. Uh, <coughs> due to the late hour, we would like to hear from you people, but I don't know, do we have to hear from all five? Or <laughs> of this, this one of you? I'll make it as brief as possible. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, council members, thank you uh, at this late hour. Um, I don't know how you sat there. Uh, I had the fortunate ability to get outside every once in a while to grab a little bit of fresh air. Um, first of all, um, it states in the agenda that this is a Little League um, proposition. This, um, we've formed a group of people which really comes, the base of it comes from two organizations in town. One is the Cape Elizabeth Little League, the other is the Cape Elizabeth Youth Soccer Association. And in addition to that, there are other interested parties in town that have become part of our group. Um, in, in recognizing the need that we have to build ball fields. Um, one of the things that we have looked at over the past several years from both Little League and from the Soccer Association is the fact that we have a bulge in the school-aged children in this town which creates a bigger and bigger need for recreational facilities, one of them being what we provide for the town both in Little League and the Youth Soccer Association um, in, in terms of organized uh, recreation. Um, there, just to kind of give you an idea about what's happened in Little League, we've gone from about 600 um, registrants uh, two years ago to 645 registrants in the 1994 season. Um, we already had severe um, problems in scheduling field time and having real fields for all of our ballplayers to play on. Um, the Soccer Association in 1994 had to play most of its travel games away from the town because there was not field space sufficient for us to play in town. Um, in addition, the ability for us to schedule practice time on these fields is critical, and nobody gets the amount of practice time that they really need because of the lack of field space. And so those are, that's the reason for the two organizations getting together. Um, one of the things that we wanted to be part of is not part of the problem that we have in terms of having a lack of field space, but be, to be able to begin to present a solution um, for the town and the town council. And we've gone a long way in doing that. We started a committee. I sent a letter to the Ford Advisory Commission back last July, made a presentation to them 
in October. Um, they sent a letter to Mike McGovern and just basically to find out who's responsible for approving uh, building fields at the Fort at Fort Williams and again also we'd like to know um, the ability to have approval for building a field at Lions Field um, the committee at this point has talked with M Mr. McGovern regarding what we've done up to the point that was in, at the last week of uh, December um, and we have done two things one is we have separated into two separate committees. We want to make sure that we are able to build these fields with no uh, funds out of the town budget. In other words, these are going to come either from in the form of grants or in the form of solicited or fundraising events, solicited funds or fundraising events. We have separated into two separate committees. Like I said, one's going to be solely responsible for raising funds and the other is going to be solely responsible for the site plan and for the building. Um, at this point, we have about 13 or 14 uh, people that are involved. Um, all of them are split up, most, some on one committee and some on the other committee. Um, the proposed, uh, first proposal will be for the Fort, for, for the Fort Williams field. It is um, a place that has already been designated on the Fort Williams master plan to be there for a multi-purpose ball field. We have gone and done some preliminary site plans. Um, in other words, we've kind of laid out where the ball field will go on, at its designated space at Fort Williams um, with, a, with four different designs um, for you to kind of take a look at and see what we're trying to do. But we would look like your approval to go ahead and, and start to pay for full site plan, which would include having known where the parking is going to come from, um, knowing how the drainage is going to go in, uh, where's the water going to come, come to, all, all the kinds of things that we need to, to, to have in order for us to present this to the planning board. Thank you. Has anybody from the council got any comments, questions? Yes, Councilor Cogshaw. How many fields are we building? We're looking at... New building, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, 70 or 80, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're really looking at two sites. The first site is at Fort Williams mm -hmm. at the designated spot on the master plan. Um, and the second spot would be up and above um, Lions Field, above the current Lions baseball field. There's another spot that has been designated as a ball field up above. And both of these fields would be used by both soccer and Little League? Um, yes and no. They'd be used by both. But in addition to that, they'd be open for anybody to use in the town at any time that it's not taken by one of those two organizations. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Council Annell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think the, the sentence, uh, in, in light of some of the discussion tonight, that we are prepared to do this using no funds from the town budget uh, recommends this project. Uh, I, I know that... Uh, field space is a perennial problem <clears throat> and uh, I, uh, I think that uh, the, gee, the, the youth in this community have certainly uh, uh, they, they, they've certainly uh, done well with what we've given them so far as far as youth soccer and, and Little League thank you okay anybody else I just want to say reading some of the material that I see that the number of youngsters that you got involved here and the number of fields that's within the Cape, I th think it's a real good project to move forward on, and I support it 100% because uh, I think it's good that they have fields to play on. Anybody else? Anybody care to make a motion? Council McLaughlin. Before a motion is made, I just say publicly some of the um, comments that I made to Dan on the phone last night. Um, I think it's very important that you have the money or the, I'm losing it, <laughs> or the pledges of money in hand before you start construction, your first field construction. I would hate to see you get caught midstream and I would hate to see you get caught midstream. We'll leave it at that. Uh, well, we talked a bit a about... A half-finished ball field. Yeah, a half-field <laughs> doesn't do a lot for me, <laughs> for the kids will be playing there. And I'm certainly well aware of the dearth of fields in the town. 
my kids have used their share. Um, as for the site plan, I think that's something that you need to submit to staff and get their review on it before the council looks at it. You know, that's the role of staff, and that's what needs to be done in this instance. Yeah, I think we're just basically prepared if that was something that was of interest to the town council. Good, thank you. Anybody care to make a motion? Somebody yes, Council Dahlbeck. Get out of here. Uh, I would move uh, that we uh, authorize uh, this uh, group uh, uh, to continue their planning uh, for the ball fields at Fort Williams Park and uh, Lions Field. Uh, and to uh, uh, and that we establish a fund uh, to uh, be able to receive the monies they uh, solicit. Can I make sure. one more comment? There's also another issue, uh, one other issue, and that is that, sure. and I think, Mike, you've said that we can do this. This is to come underneath the umbrella of the town's insurance so that as a group we don't have to go out and purchase it uh, and, and take away from the okay. fundraising. That's under that, their recommendation. That it's on town land. It's mm. town money. So it's that automatic. all comes automatically. You're safe. Okay. Yeah. Do we hear a second? Second it. Okay. And moved and second. Any other comment, questions? Only those acts they are doing on behalf of whatever the project. I, I don't want to be taken out of context. <laughs> <laughs> Everything they do is not covered. <laughs> <laughs> Good try. Almost. <laughs> Councilor Cogachel. Yes, I'd like to amend the motion to also say we refer the site plan to staff for review. Second. And that it would be turned to us at a later date. I'll accept that amendment. Yeah. Accept that amendment. Yeah. Need to vote on the amendment. Everybody understand the motion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, vote. Seven or nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, folks. Just one more. What was that? The second item relates to this. Oh, go ahead. Item 91, to consider authorizing the town manager to apply for a main bureau of parks and recreation grant for Little League ball field with all locations matched to be donated and take any necessary action. Do you have a comment? Yeah, I, I, I do, even though it is late. Uh, I, I do, it authorizes the manager to apply, but I want to let the council know that Pat Carroll, a citizen of the community and Maureen O'Mara uh, put this application together in about three days uh, from when three Pat, hours. Three Pat hours. first <laughs> came available and Maureen worked late into the evening once and in the spirit of helping the kids of the community and I really do appreciate the time that was spent on it. Thank you. Anybody else? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor raise your hand. Those opposed? Nice. Vote seven to nothing. Thank you. You can appreciate leave. it. If it wasn't quite so late, we would let you all speak. <laughs> Item 92: Consider authorizing the town manager <clears throat> to apply for a Maine Coastal Program Waterfront Grant Action Grant, excuse me, for thirty thousand dollars for a pathway at Fort Williams Park, with all local match to be donated and taken and taking the necessary action. Do you have a comment? Yes. It's the trouble with grants, you know. Yeah, this is, this is a grant. grant uh, as the council is aware, there's a, there's a donor who up to this point remains anonymous and will remain anonymous until I, everything is finalized, uh, who has offered to give $25,000 toward uh, such a path. Uh, he also has indicated his willingness to go out and to tap some of his friends for assistance and the gentleman uh, is a is a uh, leader in the business community and I think would have that ability uh, to uh, raise on his own with his own contribution up to at least 30,000. Uh, I've been working very closely with the Fort Williams Advisory Commission and uh, with Tom Emery uh, as, a, as a private consultant in uh, working to develop a plan for this. It would involve a, a pathway that starts up just around the lighthouse, winds its way up to the the lower part of the top bank and goes along that top of the bank and then has a couple of fingers that go down to the ocean that will really improve uh, an existing, I hate to use the word again, unsafe situation uh, and will be done uh, without any direct town cost. Uh, obviously we have indirect costs by putting together 
grant applications and doing some of those things in the time we spend overlooking it. But uh, the 60, Tom's latest estimate was, was 40,000. So this would, less we'd be accused of lowballing one of these things again, uh, this uh, more than covers uh, any potential cost. Anybody got any comments? Uh, anybody care to make a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move we authorize the manager to file a letter of interest for a Maine Coastal Program on Front Action Grant for 30000 for a pathway at Fort Williams Park with all second. local match to be donated. And move. Seconded, Diane? Yes. Yep. Anybody? No comment? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? To vote, seven to none. Moving right along. <laughs> Thanks, Maureen. That was an easy, easy evening, right, Maureen? <laughs> Item 93, to consider authorizing the Cape Elizabeth Police Department to apply for a COPS FAST grant and take any necessary action. Do you have a comment or two you'd like? Yes. Uh, this process has evolved uh, over several months. Uh, I've heard a lot of comments about concern with grants, not only this evening, but earlier. Uh, we looked at uh, a perhaps more extensive program earlier. The chief and I had some, some really uh, good conversations on what is it that we truly need and what is best for this community. Uh, he has worked very closely with uh, one of the officers in the department, John McGinty, in preparing this, and he is prepared uh, to give an overview of, uh, if the council would wish, beyond the, the information that was already provided in your packet and in, in the supplemental packet. But I think it's a, it's a unique application in terms of answering a lot of the issues we hear, uh, we've heard tonight in relation to working better with the community on different issues, as, as well as some of the issues the council's been working with and mm -hmm. concern over drug and alcohol use and abuse yeah. in this community. But the chief is here to provide the more pertinent details and to uh, answer any questions you may have. Chief, you have a comment or two? Thank you. Just just a couple of very uh, brief ones. It's uh, a late hour, you know. I haven't been up this late since I waited up for Santa, so I won't, won't take <laughs> I'll just take a minute. Uh, to, to begin with, this is, uh, this is an application. These funds have not been approved. I understand that DOJ is going to make some uh, decisions in February, and at that time, if we were fortunate enough to receive this money, I would, of course, come back to the council and ask for approval to accept it. Uh, but the position that we have applied for is uh, one of this community liaison officer that we alluded to in the uh, community drug policy, which we're still working on and is kind of in preliminary stages. Uh, typically, it, it is a position which is non-typical, I should say, in terms of law enforcement. This, this person would, would be a police officer. Uh, would serve a non-traditional police role in that uh, he would be uh, serving intervention for uh, families that were at risk, uh, cases of abuse, uh, long-term projects that uh, are not necessarily uh, crime related. So I think uh, uh, speaking to the council's goals of more um, community-oriented service and uh, service to the town, this, this position would be, would be good. Um, I have a couple of concerns. and, and uh, one is that uh, the the uh, position would be funded at 75 percent the first year, 50 percent the second, uh, 25 percent the third, and then the town would bear the cost of that position uh, after the fourth year. However, uh, this COPS FAST grant application does not require continuation of this funding. The original uh, uh, crime bill did. So I think what, uh, what's been happening, um, and another part to that I, I should add before I go on, is that I assume that uh, there's going to be some amendments, some adjustments made to the crime bill uh, in this term of the legislature, so our Congress. And it would be too bad if we weren't in the loop and they decided to fully fund this. I think what's happening around the country is that uh, many departments are not hiring these offices uh, in consideration that they're going to have to fund this fully in four years. So, for instance, the state of Maine had, uh, I think, $300 million. They had enough money to authorize 800 additional police officers. There's only 2,400 police officers in the state of Maine now. I don't see uh, under any situation where we were going to increase staffing levels in police departments by one-third. So um, that would mean about eight officers for every police department. And in fact, half the police departments in Maine have fewer than eight officers to begin with. So once this all shakes out and they realize that uh, all these officers are not going to be hired, 
there are going to be some surplus monies available, I would assume. What they're going to do with that money, I don't know. Uh, but it is possible, and we have been t talking with Department of Justice officials, it is possible that they could fully fund these positions over four years. Uh, we are not obligated, again, to accept this money. We are not obligated to continue uh, funding this position. If, in fact, uh, after four years we had to make that decision, uh, we have two officers that are scheduled to retire within that time period. So we may just allow those officers to retire, uh, not fill those positions, and would not have any more liability in terms of uh, salary and benefits. And that, that funding does include both salary and benefits. The first year cost to the town would be uh, $7,474. Thank you. And Council Cogshaw. Are any of the duties that this officer is expected to perform currently being performed by officers? Uh, well, it's kind of a montage. Several officers are doing several different things. One of the conditions of this grant is that it cannot supplant existing resources. So uh, we couldn't hire a police officer and say that they were going to do community liaison work and then put them in a full-time capacity on the road, even though they will be sworn and have arrest powers. Uh, that cannot be their primary responsibility. So this would be uh, in addition to what, uh, what we're doing already, and this community liaison officer I mentioned earlier, um, the duties of that officer that we articulated in our you know, drug policy, community drug policy, would be that primary responsibility, as well as a backup DARE officer. So the offices um, that we currently have on staff are not doing any of these kinds? That's correct. They are not doing any of it? Other, other than we have one DARE officer, this, this officer would serve as an additional DARE officer. We had trained uh, one person as an additional DARE officer, and um, he left for Portland PD, so they get the benefit of, uh, of our training. But uh, that would be the only, the only responsibility they'd have that's in existence today. We must train them well. We seem to lose them after they're trained. Anybody else? Yes, Councilor Marvin. So are you saying that if you send this grant application in, it may be funded at a different level than is indicated here, but you would come back to us before accepting the money? That's correct. Okay. Anybody else? Councilor McLaughlin. When, I, when the manager first told me this was in the packet, and I just said, no way, <laughs> quite frankly. But the more I've heard about it, and um, Chief and I had a good discussion this morning, my concern was what happens after the third year? Do we have to go for full funding? But understanding the um, situation with attrition through retirement, I think it makes some good sense. I appreciate you mm -hmm. informing us of that. Anybody else? Do we have a motion? I would move the uh, filing uh, of the application. Second. Been, been moved and seconded. Any other comments? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? One, six to one. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Jeez. Get breakfast. <laughs> Got breakfast on. <laughs> Item 94, to consider a report from the town manager regarding parking near Placid Field and take any necessary action. You are receiving your packet of... A memo to that effect. So what is being recommended is an amendment to the traffic ordinance which provides that parking would be prohibited along the southwesterly side of Little John Road from Shore Road to Robin Hood Road from May 1 to October 1. This is the non-field side of the road. Uh, all Everything else is, is already uh, okay. in the ordinance or provided for, so recommending that language be set for public hearing. We would send notices to all the abutters to that particular area so that they were aware that it was being considered. Anybody get any comment? Got a motion? On a motion? I would move that uh, we uh, uh, refer this to a public hearing and set the public hearing for Monday, February 13th, 1995. Second it. 7.30. At 7.30 at the town hall. do not say that on my... Oh. I was just reading yeah. this. <laughs> Been moved and seconded. Anybody else? Any other comment? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? To vote seven. Uh, item 95 to consider proposed amendments to the sewer ordinance and take any necessary action. Do yeah. I hear a motion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, the, a long, long process gone on for years. Uh, and just for updating for the public who may be here this evening interested in this. Uh, 
what, what this would do is uh, take to public hearing uh, some proposed amendments that have been looked at in the council workshop twice uh, by the sewer committee a couple different times. And the, the primary difference is, as you look at the map of the different sewer areas, it really loosens up who's allowed to connect within those map sewer areas. Right now, there's certain frontage and other requirements, but the basic change in this, I think the most important thing, is that if you're in one of those shaded areas on that map, you want to have a sewer, you can connect to it. There are other provisions as well, which I would explain at the public hearing, but that's the, the major change. Anybody else? Got to make a motion? I move we set to public hearing on Monday, February 13th, 90, 1995, 730 at Town Hall, the proposed amendments to the public sewer ordinance. I'll second. Anybody have any comments? Ready for the motion? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? It's a vote, seven or nothing. <laughs> Just leave it up. Item 96, to consider acknowledging a receipt of the capital improvement plan for 1996 in the year 2000 and taking the necessary action. Mr. Manager. Yes, I have flip charts ready to go oh. over this. <laughs> I do, although I, I do want to point out two things. I received superintendent of schools just returned from Hong Kong and uh, her, her great vacation, a uh, well-deserved vacation. And she provided to me today a copy of the Cape Elizabeth High School five-year rehabilitation plan, which was recently completed, as well as the system-wide technology steering committee report. So I'm very pleased to report that there are components within the school department that can be incorporated, and I plan to look at this further, provide copies to the council, and uh, try to get a, a more coordinated capital improvement plan. Thank you. You're still going to push it for the rest of the school capital improvement plan? Yes, her, there's a cover memo which explains that. Uh, she, uh, even just getting back to work uh, uh, this Monday, uh, okay. on Monday, uh, she uh, was able to look at it and put together a memo. Do we hear a motion? Council Cogshall. I um, acknowledge receipt of the town of Cape Elizabeth um, capital budget projections from fiscal year 1996 to fiscal year 2000. Oh, second Been moved and seconded. <clears throat> Any comment? Excuse me. Council Cogshall. Um, is there supposed to be additional information in here as to building maintenance? Where, where are you? Just in general, building. other than replacing the clapboards on the town hall. Do we have other listed ba uh, building maintenance and repairs? So. No. Most of them are included within here, the ones that are contemplated in the municipal buildings. Let's go ahead. There's something in the library. Yeah, there's a couple odds in it yeah, in the okay. library. I just want to make sure that, public that, works, yeah. that building maintenance is included. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Might not get up to me. Been moved and seconded. Any other comment? All those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, vote. You voted, didn't you, Jane? Yes, I did. Yes, she did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Item 97, to consider a report from the Appointments Committee regarding Vacancy on boards, commissions, and committees and take any necessary action. Please Council McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appointments Committee has three appointments to recommend to the Council tonight. The first is recommending John Ridge. He has served one term on the Board of Assessment Review. We are recommending him to serve an additional term that will expire 1198. He's got some valuable experience on this board. They have an upcoming hearing and we're very thankful to John for agreeing to serve, actually for one additional year, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. The second one is for Recycling Committee. There's an opening, an unexpired term. We recommend Martha Palmer to serve that unexpired term to 1196. She has a strong personal interest in recycling and in communicating and educating about recycling and looks forward to being on an active committee. The third is Conservation Commission. It's a regular three-year term serving to 1198. We recommend the appointment of Kathleen Tarpo. She has good scientific background, good background in plants and wildlife. And she's employed at Seawood Nurseries. I would move the uh, council approve those three recommendations. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any comment? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Vote. Seven to nothing. <coughs> 
citizens discussion of items not on the agenda yeah, nothing to discuss you could say good night he's writing for the glory <laughs> Well, I didn't know he no went energy or to discuss anything. <laughs> so we had item 98 to consider entering, entering into executive session and to discuss the plumber versus the town of Cape Elizabeth and to discuss land acquisition disposition issues and take any necessary action. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to propose, Mr. Chairman, this to be put off to a special town council meeting to be held on January 23rd, the same night that you have a workshop scheduled. Oh, second. Yeah. So move. Second. <coughs> All those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, it's a vote. Mr. Chairman, I would just like to thank this council and our manager for dealing with executive session items the way we do in our agenda. <laughs> <laughs> and not creating any flat. Any other comments? Yeah, can we go home? I yes. move, move to adjourn. We move we adjourn. Second, third, All in favor, fourth. raise your hand. Those opposed? You can stay here. At 1 p.m. I believe this is about the longest council meeting we've had for years. It is. I have the longest one I've ever had. Good job. Yeah. I had a couple of things I wanted to bring up, but I don't dare. Not tonight. We're going to have a Not this morning. Oh, yeah.